welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel, that is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And I am back for another weekly wrap up. And I only finished one thing this week. I finished the short story. Destiny Delayed by Ogunchivwe Donald Ekpeki. I know I butchered that first name. I keep trying to say it and I will think I have it right and then I come up here and I film it and then I can't ever pronounce it. So Ekpeki comes back with another very interesting concept short story. He was nominated last year for the Nebulas and the Hugos for his story O2 Arena. So this is again set in Nigeria, but this time we're dealing with a machine that can take people's destinies out of them. And the machine is being operated by a bank, and so you can, people can give up their destiny for a period of time for a bank loan. Or you, as a parent, you can pull your child's destiny out for a bank loan. And so this kind of follows two people. One is a new employee of the bank who is now his job to go find people to have their destinies removed for the loans. And then the second person is a father of a daughter who decides to have his daughter's destiny removed in order to make a better life for his family. And while this is like a near future sci-fi story, it also gives us a good insight into another society and how they operate and their ways of thinking. I liked how Ekpeki covered why only Nigeria has this technology and not the whole world. And so thus the man who needs a loan for his research can only work with this bank. He can't go anywhere else in the world. That was a really interesting way of explaining that. And then I like how everything that was promised at the beginning is fulfilled at the end. I'm not going to go into a lot of details here. I am working on a short story Nebula nomination vlog, so I'll talk more there. But this was very interesting and I, jo I enjoy Ekpeki and his science fiction very much. This was a week where I just kept on reading things. I made a lot more progress in Crucible of Hell. I really try to do like a chapter a day, but the chapters are short, so sometimes I am able to read a little bit more, but I also want to give the thought and attention to each of these chapters as I'm reading them too. This isn't a fiction book, so it's not just like keep flying by, oh wait, I missed something, I'm gonna jump back and reread snippets to make sure I'm on the right track. This is a history book of a, an invasion of an island during war, and it covers both sides. So it covers the United States, it covers the Japanese, it covers the Okinawan, and it covers the uh, British a little bit. So actually four sides. Then, you know, moody readiness, I picked up Monsters We Defy by Leslie Penelope. I'm enjoying this. I think from the very beginning, I just... The rhythm was very nice to read and get into. And this is about a young woman named Clara who can talk to spirits. And she right now has a duty where if somebody asks for help, she has to help them. And part of when you are asking something from a spirit, you're, you're asking for something and if they give that to you, that's called a charm, but they also get to give you a trick. and. You, you see this contradiction at the very beginning and you don't have to accept that deal but if you do that you, you do have to take the trick with the charm you don't get to say well I want the charm but I don't want the trick Claire is very honest about how this process works and then a mother comes to her needing help and the spirits are not answering and so she's now try to figure out what's going on and then a spirit comes to her going well there's this object that is 
causing harm and I want you to get it for me <laughs> and then I will remove the trick that you have and you will be free <laughs> so Clara at this moment is thinking about doing it and then I tried light blade a little bit longer and I'm just not in the mood for it right now this isn't a like DNF did not finish because I am going to pick it up again but I, I think with my mental mind right now I needed something a little faster and I'm not really into a revenge plot at this moment so I picked up Reaper by Elliot Pepper which is another of our science fiction which is another of our self-published science fiction contestants I'm about 30% in and I'm enjoying it. It does have multiple perspectives of different people who are work with this investment company and they've all just been gathered onto a ship and so it's kind of like setting up for a murder mystery in my head. I don't know if that's true, but I think one of my one of my teammates said that it was normally listed under mystery like suspense thriller. I was like, "Okay, I can see those threads getting wrapped up, but this is set like in the near future and this investment company likes to invest in people who are like arts based and technology based. And yeah, so it's near future science fiction. And then I continued reading a little bit longer in Engaging the Enemy, which is a reread for me. And this is about a young woman who sh got kicked out of the mili military academy based off of a decision she had made and the optics of it. And so her family, who are spaceship traders, you know, really quickly kind of push her into being a spaceship captain on a mission. The mission's actually to go and junk the ship. It's old. But the Vada spirit normally these uh, young Vadas try to find a way to keep their ship or to make trade and profit is their family motto off of the journey. And so she's been placed with an experienced crew and her family's just kind of wanting to see what she's going to do. They didn't want her to go into the military. They were always interested or they always thought she would be a great fit for trading. She wasn't interested in it. Um, and you find out why as the story goes but she has found a interesting deal on the first planet that she was assigned to stop to so she went to another planet a Terry system that has now just broken out in war and so she's dealing with that <laughs> sometimes I just need to reread to help reset my brain and I have no clue <laughs> what I will be continuing with or not continuing with this next week. No, I take that back. I am making steady progress in this. I, I do want to finish this by the end of the month. My typical, like when I'm actually focusing on a nonfiction is about three months. So I think I was getting this about end of January, beginning of February. If I could finish it this month, that would be great. Because I have a work readathon next month and <clears throat> I'm pretty sure I'll read, I'll pick up at least one or two non-fictions for that one. And so on to my writing wrap-up. I recently received a newsletter from a writer that talked about, you know, sometimes you just don't write because you need to fill your creative well, and so that's what I'm going to say is I'm working on filling my creative well so not actively writing, but continued watching the replay from Fantasy Week by Pro Writing Aid, and I really enjoyed the interview with Rebecca Kwam. It, like she's just fascinating as a person, and then her whole process of how she approaches writing, I'm like, oh, this actually makes me really enjoy your books more. Then I watched a session that was talking about um, exposition and how to balance that with keeping everything moving and you know a lot of it was things that I know but sometimes hearing things that you know just helps you go oh yeah I, I need to work with that or work on that 
my favorite panel of this conference was working with criticism by Laura Van Ardenek Bao? Ba? I totally butchered that name too. I mean, she talked about that reviews aren't bad, criticism isn't bad, but you need to be aware of what is applicable to you and what is not applicable. And so she, th that's what her slides were about. And as she was going through it, I realized, hey, this can also be adapted to real life and with teenagers. So I did reach out to her and asked, requested her slides. She, she didn't, she had not given her writing aid, but I was just like, this, this is also fascinating. Like, it's great also advice for writing. And she talks about why she does read her reviews and how she incorporates those, but also how she, you know, takes criticism for from critique partner, partners, from beta readers, from editors. It, it was really great. I then watched a panel about reverse outlining, which I was really curious about because I'm typically a discovery writer. So I don't do an outline before I start writing, but typically when I'm going into my first draft, sorry, my process is I do a, miss, a zero draft because I write out of order. I have, I just am letting the characters talk basically. And a lot of my first scenes are just them talking. It's a lot of dialogue. So then when I go to do my first draft, a lot of that's putting things in order and then identifying where I need to add scenes so that there's a flow and everything makes sense. So that's kind of when I outline. So I was curious about this reverse outlining process. Now, Masha is an outliner and she talks about how she'll get to a certain process in her writing and she fe she's feeling stuck. And so then she goes back and revisits her outline and sees what else is going on and reworks it. And that's kind of part of the reverse outlining. But then she also shared that she keeps two files in her research folder. One is just for ideas and others for questions. And so the idea is, is while you're writing, anything that pops up that is not applicable to what you're writing currently, she puts it in the idea folder. And then for questions, it's anything while she's writing, that's a question that she can't answer, but probably is going to be important, you know, to make sure there's no plot holes, she puts in the questions section. And then when she gets stuck, she'll sometimes go and look at these and kind of see, do these ideas work for like fixing a, a plot hole or getting me unstuck in with what I'm doing. And I, I just thought that was awesome. <laughs> like I had never, I have, these are not techniques that I have used, but I like them and I do think I'm going to start incorporating them. I then watched the how to write a fight. I typically shy away from actual fights because I know I can't describe them well. So this one I was really, really wanting to do. Got a lot of, you know, interesting advice. And he mentioned a book called Anatomy of a Martial Artist which kind of shows like as they punch, like what muscles are going, like what's going on in, under the skin, which I think is fascinating and I want to buy as a reference book. Because sometimes you have characters who their personality is, they're just going to fight. But I also like that he pointed out that you're not going to give a blow by blow in a fight. <laughs> to make a fight compelling, it is really about how it affects the character, you know, their emotional responses to it. And so it's like, you'll have a fight and then you need to have a scene with how the character is dealing with the after effects of that fight, whether it's an injury or emotional, you need both of those things there. And then I, the last panel that I was able to watch was writing interiority. And I thought this was very interesting because it's a lot of the thoughts and feelings of the inside of the character as they are processing everything else that is happening. And I was especially interested in this because I am out for reading a friend's manuscript and one of the characters I'm having a hard time with. And so I was wondering if maybe it's because I just am not connecting with her inner thoughts. Not quite what this panel is talking about, but yeah, I, I see how it works. But And then that's really also what I've been doing. I'm hoping is I'm working on my friend's story. I, I, I'm either halfway to the three-fourths mark, somewhere in between there, of her story, 
it's a fantasy romance, which is a genre that I like to read. And I am really enjoying this process. What I find is every time that I read Alpha Reader Beta read someone's story, it actually makes me a better writer. <laughs> Not because I am looking and looking at these things as a writer and I'm looking at the story as a reader and seeing how things connect. Of course, editing's always been my favorite part of the process. So I, I'm enjoying this. And I'm not like editing her work, but I'm giving her like feedback on what I think. And as with anything, she can just look at it and be like, mm, that's not applicable to me, but thanks, which is fine too. I'm still learning a lot from this process. And it's fun to see as they're going along and getting like little hints dropped. And I'm like, okay, why? What? Like, or I'm making guesses. And then I know there's been times like later on the page, I'm like, never mind, I'm question answered. Or I'll be like, okay, this is my guess for this couple of chapters later, later, okay, we received some new information. Here's how my guess has changed. That way she can see, you know, as a, as a reader, I am making guesses about things and kind of where my brain is thinking and she'll get to see when I figure it out, if I figure it out. And that's kind of part of the fun of this. And for other media. <laughs> I was watching conference videos. I really wasn't doing too much else. We did watch some John Oliver catching up on the past two weeks. He has a great one about AI. I know I've been hearing a lot of people here in the YouTube community talking about AI and artists. I've heard with writers like Joanna Penn about AI and voice voices. So I've, I've heard a lot about different AI, and then John Oliver went a slightly different direction with the AI conversation and was talking more about legislation and uh, regulation. So it's a really nice one, you know, to as you're getting all this information about AI to also remember, here we go, we, we need this other piece as well. And then we watched his one about DeSantis, kind of confirmed all my thoughts about the guy already. Okay, so what's coming up for me this month besides the videos that I filmed and I have to finish editing for you for my reviews. Those are coming obviously, but on Sunday, March 26th, I am going to be on Jen's bookshelf. She is participating in the Storytellers Hearth stream. This is a rebrand from the Worldwide Write-a-thon, and we are doing so. I'm right, so I'm joining her as a co-host for a social stream on March 26 at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I am looking forward to doing that. I know there's going to be some other people that one I have seen before, and one will be completely new to me. I think there's four of us. There might be, I think, no, I think I just saw a fifth one. I am not 100% certain. I'm just, I'm down for a com fun conversation. So while this uh, stream weekend is a lot of people writing, you don't have to write. You can come and just listen to us chit chat about stories. And then during our sprints, you can read or do other things, but yeah, if you have the time, come join us and hang out. And that's all I have at this time. So thank you and have a great day. Mm -hmm.